we have a very spry and otherwise fit 70 year old. She's got severe uh, back pain, I think it's 9 out of 10, and severe left leg pain, that's like 9 out of 10 also. On imaging study, she's got lots of degeneration, the disc is completely collapsed, and uh, on the um, right side, she's got an asymmetric disc collapse. On flexion extension views, she's got a vacuum phenomenon and maybe a trace spondy on flexion view. And then on imaging study, she's got a 3-4 far lateral disc. This is not the best picture, but you can already see part of it starting to bulge out. If you go a little bit further out laterally, this whole area is completely occluded. So in the setting of severe back pain, vacuum phenomenon, a focal asymmetric disc collapse and a far lateral disc herniation. Um, I like doing a minimal invasive T lift so that I can get a full decompression and also try to stabilize what seems to be a painful motion segment. Hopefully, she'll be able to go home later this afternoon or at the very least tomorrow morning. We're all hoping for a great result. Oh, by the way, I want to make some introductions. He's a black belt. Sanai's a black belt. Deborah's a black belt. Jen's like a Jen, you're a purple belt, right? I'm to do the, what happened last time. Mark Kane, quarter percent. I'm loving it. One more, please. Thank you. Ten blade next. Can I have a napkin? Thank you. Starting. So I'm just going to go straight through the skin and fascia. And I have to be able to fit my two fingers in here. Otherwise, the two tulips but perfect for the screws, this is a classic example. I'm having to really reach over. But, all that shit, doing this right. Because you know what my mom always said? Find it to be a lot easier without blood vessels in there. So that's three. TT, right, yep. So that's what I call internal validation. That kid is not anything special. If he had, if I had all that equipment, I'd be a mental risk surgeon too. Because you know, the other thing my mom always said, you don't in your life. I'd be like, I don't know. I think I got struck by lightning. That, but even a broken clock is right twice a day. Sometimes I have to go through some kind of interesting maneuvers. Alright, so the blue will help me figure out what's disc and what's nerve and what's cartilage. Now it? It's methylene blue only because indigo carmine is no longer made. Sometimes there's a 20 second delay from the time I tamp on a nerve before she hears it. Like a really heavy drape. The ligamentum flavum comes down, becomes confluent with the facetor and capsule. And as you're reaming, if you don't go plunging in there, the drape will push the drill tube away and this will slide by. So, you have to do a couple of things. One, you have to tap into the force. And two, you have to stick your pinky out. This is not one where you're just like, and then look at this. I hope that's not nerve. Oh, I was supposed to step away for you to do something, wasn't I? You sure? Can I? So the reason why I use the laser is that, see that tissue? It's not going anywhere anymore. If I put the laser on there, it will disappear. So the laser and the Elman probe work on two slightly different types of tissues. The Elman probe works on the kind of like the good friend librarian girl, and the laser is more like the totally hot, smoking hot chick. I did this, watch. Does that satisfy you? You're above the nerve. What? Just, no, the nerve is coming across and there's a blood vessel right there. Right. It's not the bare naked nerve. It's got its perineural sheath. With all all right, there's the disc herniation. It's stained blue. It came all the way out laterally. The big piece probably got resorbed. The small piece is still there and everything was stuck down. So. 
you never know. Let me have the curly Q2 tray. That's the nerve above me with its periosteal sheath. Do not try this at home. I love doing that, by the way. That feels really good. There's a bump right there shot. That one needs a little bit of work. I bet you I don't have to use the Batman at all, but let me see the Batman. So check this out. So they used to make this. All right, so here's the end plate prep. That anterior part right here is at X-ray. I can go a little bit more, but that's the, no, that's the like uh, little rib. I don't need to go over that. Oh yeah, I'm out the side right there. I gotta be careful with the bone graft there. And that feels really good. That seems too far across. Let me see a quick AP. You're gonna go like this. Shot, and back down. Let's see how fast you can do that, Nader. Cell yeah. station guy and all the equipment. Look how little the Eloquence guys do anything about Eloquence. They, get it. they have it so lucky, but at the same time, they don't make all, you know, much money off this. So. I feel bad riding them too hard, but Sinai. All right, there's the cage. It's in there really solidly. It is well clear of the nerve, but it's all the way to the back. Wow, that's really close, but it provides a lot more stability there because they do want the longest cage possible since it's narrow. And that's why I should muck around because look at that. Like my mom always said, spine surgery would be so much easier without blood vessels and nerve. Oh, you already did that, huh? How's the case go, Dr. Karen? It went spectacularly. I really am anticipating a great result. So best wishes on a speedy recovery. And thank you for being so thin and healthy because the incisions are really small too.